if Silence of the Lambs has taught me anything, there's not a whole lot of basements in LA. So that, I think that's where my nervousness comes from. I'm real estate agent James Harris, and I sold this house. Now I'm challenging three people with different real estate experience to try and guess how much it sold for. Hi, I'm Brian and I rent a room and a home. Hi, I'm Daniela and I own my apartment. Hi, my name is Annalisa and I'm the president of a real estate marketing company. I'll be revealing the listing to them bit by bit. This is Asking Price. So this is a Los Angeles house. Six bedroom, eight bathroom. 6,016 square feet. And the lot size is 14,321 square feet. Right off the bat, this is at least a million dollars. My first reaction with six bedrooms is like, how many people are in your family to have that big of a property? That's way too many bedrooms, but no one's got to wait to use the bathroom. That's a big house, probably about the equivalent of three homes, you know, on average in America. There's a lot of room for activities, I guess. Maybe there are aspects to this property that would have help or certain amenities to kind of justify its size. I think this type of home is for the upper echelons of society. You have this beautiful, evening shot of the home from the perspective of the pool. I see these beautiful windows that overlook the pool and there's an, a hint of an archway and I am a fan of an archway. When luxury home buyers are out in the market purchasing a house, they really expect to see six bedrooms and 6,000 square feet, whilst is a massive house, that could work for just about anyone that's looking for a luxury home. Now, onto the amenities. All right, amenities, two car garage. Right off the bat, I think there's a disconnect here. I wouldn't call that an amenity. I'd call that a standard expectation of a home this size. Either way you cut the pie, a two car garage doesn't, doesn't fit the bill. Private backyard, that's certainly an amenity and an important selling feature. Not surprised, a lot this size that was just assumed. The home has a guest house. Either you have the maid living in there or the the house owners live in the guest house and they're renting this on Airbnb. 40 foot privacy hedging. That's impressive, that's pretty tall. It's greenery, I, I don't think that it's particularly special. That's a really great amenity. It takes a long time for a 40 foot hedge to grow. The home also has a 1,000 square foot master suite, probably about 15% of the size of the home. My apartment is 757 square foot. The fact that this is bigger than my apartment is uh, a little unnerving. Oh, um, a hidden basement door. That's, I've never seen anything like that listed. What are they hiding down there? Is it a man cave? Is it like a, is it some sort of uh, 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 BDSM thing? I don't know. Basements in general are just a strange thing to come by in Los Angeles, so I'd be curious to see where that hidden basement door leads to. Oh, a lower level wine filler. <laughs> this hidden door is actually a bookshelf that swings out to lead you to a spiral staircase and into the wine cellar on the lower level. It has a wine tasting room. I don't see the need for a specific room for that. I feel like I could just enjoy that in the living room. This is the first time I've seen a home with a cigar room listed, so that is really unique. And unique is great, but it doesn't always mean that that increases the price a ton. Beautiful landscaping, that would be assumed given the photo. Whilst we're used to seeing beautifully landscaped properties, it's very hard to import trees of this size to create this privacy because these take 20, 30 years to grow into and mature. Salt water fish tank. Where? Where would you have that that would be appealing to all home buyers? It's just too specific. A uh, swimming pool. I could see myself swimming in this and then forgetting about it and letting it get dirty and then turning green and then it's there. A covered cabana, surround sound. Wiring a home can be very expensive. And so the fact that that has already been done for you is great. Outdoor projector. 
Now that comes with a house? I have a projector in my apartment, but I can tell you it does not add value. A yoga platform. It sounds like it might be one of those things where it's like, here's a piece of concrete that we didn't know what to do with it, so we're gonna call it a yoga platform. That could be a really smart marketing technique. Gated property. This is a place that really doesn't want intruders or outsiders coming in. Built-in barbecue. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I guess that's kind of cool. This house has just about everything. Six bedrooms, 6,000 square feet, over two stories with a hidden humidor and wine cellar, a swimming pool that gives the property a compound feel and a completely private oasis. Amenities today very much dictate what the price of a property will be. Everybody in this price point wants all the bells and whistles, and most importantly, they don't wanna have to lift a finger. Okay, first guess. I feel pretty confident in my first guess. I am very uncertain about making an accurate guess only because I don't know where it is. You know, I've seen the features. I, I don't think I'll ever be prepared to give a guess, but uh, I'll do it. I'm gonna guess 12 million. I'm gonna guess $3.2 million. My first guess is 8.5 million. Well, my base level is a house in Los Angeles with this kind of accoutrement, if you will, is at least a million dollars. Now this looks a lot better, so I just multiplied that number, uh, that, that one, by 12. Okay, so my factors with uh, my guess, I'm not gonna give away my trade secrets, right? Like, I have a calculation in my head. I might not be able to guess how big this is, but I'm good at math. Am I? I don't know. It's a large house. It has a lot of luxury features and amenities. It's probably in one of the more expensive areas of Los Angeles. If we went a thousand a square foot, that would be six million. But this home is so much more than that. I feel like 8.5 million takes into consideration the size of the home, the size of the lot, and all of its features. Sunset Strip, Los Angeles, California. This home is in a neighborhood called the Bird Streets. They are very well known for having amazing views, very expensive homes. This is prize coveted real estate. This is the quintessential Hollywood area, Sunset Boulevard. You got your Whiskey A Go Go, your, your Roxy Theater, your La Cienega Boulevard, the house. The Sunset Strip tends to attract younger folks, lots of money. Now, if you're the kind of person that wants walkability, the streets are too narrow to walk, otherwise you're gonna get hit by a car. Personally, I think it's a headache. Every time you gotta go to the grocery store, you gotta come down this winding hill. So if you're driving from this home, you are taking a lot of these main roads that get very congested, especially during rush hour. This property has a compound feel in a location that doesn't typically offer a lot of land. Situated on Sunset Boulevard on the edge of West Hollywood, it has been a prime party and entertainment destination since the 1920s. Not only is this house above the Sunset Strip in the hills, it's located in the Bird Streets, one of the most exclusive neighborhoods where A-listers, young Hollywood types, and CEOs flock to be five minutes from the action and miles above the noise. I still feel pretty good about my guess. I might boost it up a little bit. I feel less confident about my guess now knowing that it is tucked away in the, these hills and has access to all of these very um, convenient roads. So I might be rethinking my answer. Knowing what I know about this neighborhood, I think my guess is low. The hills have a lot to do with it. I think it doesn't make a whole lot of sense but the closer you are and the more inconvenient your house is to this whole area, the more expensive it's gonna be. Year built, 1934. Renovated in 2013. Home style, Spanish. 1934. Pretty vintage. Obviously a home that's been around for a while. I'm sure that it has some wonderful characteristics that really speak to the historic quality of it. The other thing that comes to mind is low ceilings. Having a Spanish style house is a rarity in Los Angeles. It's a very specific aesthetic. I see the family room. I see a breakfast nook. Is that a room? What is that? Kitchen, stairs, and that little curvature area. 
I'm assuming there's gotta be walls, right? But otherwise, that's an incredibly open floor plan. What jumps out at me first is that there's a bedroom immediately next to the garage. That's very peculiar. I think that's pretty normal when you have six bedrooms to have the two, two additional bedrooms on the lower level. 12 foot by, by 17 foot. I don't have a real good reference point for what that means. So there's a pool house and the word that jumps out is bar, which is fantastic because if you're going to have a pool and you're going to throw a party, you're going to need a bar. Decent sized pool house. That seems like a full on apartment. The wine cellar, okay. It's kind of oddly shaped. 31 feet by seven feet, six inches. It looks huge. Wow. The upper level, we have the master bedroom and then there are three additional bedrooms. The master bedroom looks pretty big compared to the other bedrooms. It's twice the size in some respects. The master bath looks like it's quite large. That's probably a very luxurious bathroom. Spanish style houses are the epitome of Los Angeles. Their red tile roofs, stucco walls, and courtyards are perfect for the warm weather we enjoy here. The benefit to owning an older house is you still have the charm of the exterior, the mature landscaping that's had all those years to grow in, but you have the bones of an older Spanish home, which no matter what you do to the inside, will always remain timeless. It looks bigger on the inside than the outside. It's like a TARDIS, if you will. You're looking in probably from the front door and you're seeing the main living spaces of the ground floor. You've got this very generous hallway and at the end is this very interesting statue. For a Spanish style home, and there's a lot of Eastern influence here. I would say that this home feels a, a lot more like a new construction home, at least from the inside. All right, all right, you got this little living area. You could do living room things. This is a marquee spot for a home like this. There's a fireplace. You can furnish it to seat many people. There's kind of these doorways that open into, I'm guessing, the pool area. This is where you would gather everyone. And if you were throwing a pool party, everyone can move freely into each of the spaces. We got the dining room fresh with another Buddha. That's, that's the theme here. You can easily have a dinner party for 10, maybe even fit a few more people around there. And that's important. Um, buyers of this type of home like to entertain, so they're often sizing up a dining room to see what size table they can fit into it. You can see the surround sound system in there, but I'm kind of on the fence in terms of how I feel about how practical the space is. All right, now, now we're talking. This is the wine cellar. I was waiting for you, wine cellar. That wine, it seems like a very sad space, right? I wanna fill it up. I want wine, 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 all across these racks. I'm guessing you can fit hundreds of bottles of wine in this cellar. Oh, that's beautiful. You're seeing a spa, a pool, and a hot tub. We're also seeing the outdoor projector. Looks like you can actually watch a movie from the pool. Is that a jacuzzi that's in front of the pool? I think that's a jacuzzi. Ooh, yeah. Though I do see the fish tank. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's a huge property. I'm sure that you have people that'll take care of your fish. We're also seeing the pool house. That's really nicely situated on the property. You've got great lounge space. The yoga platform is kind of like a, a raised deck. And this is also near the built-in barbecue. So you can like put the burgers on the barbecue and then go do a little yoga while you wait for them to cook. This is a very creative way to show a usable space and a really defined space in what most people might think is just sort of a side yard that isn't all that practical. This is our aerial view. That's a good looking roof. The terracotta kind of design or like colors just pops off. You know what? It's honestly a little smaller than I thought. There's a lot packed in to this piece of land. There are neighbors across the street and it is like a narrow road. So while there is privacy with the hedges and the gated home, you are gonna run into people in this neighborhood. It's time for your final guesses. I feel pretty good about my final guess. 
I have enough of information to, you know, go into this with some confidence. There's a lot happening at this home. I don't know how people house hunt. I don't know how people are in real estate. This seems exhausting. Homes in this area can really vary. In my mind, I'm thinking this could be an eight or a nine million dollar home, or it could be like a twelve million dollar home. And the more I'm thinking about this, the more I'm thinking that um, I may actually come down a bit from my original price because I didn't see any views. Man, this is tough. All right, you know, I'll just throw out a number: fifteen million. My final guess is three point eight million. My final guess is seven point five million. It's time to reveal the actual cost. I want to hear the answer, but I know I'm wrong. What's the final answer? What's the final answer? <laughs> the selling price for this house was eight point one million. Oh my gosh! It's the oh. You know what? That's fine. That's fine. I think that that's how much I would pay for the house. Oh, mm. 8.1 million. Okay. I was close, but not close enough. I honestly expected more from, from the Hollywood Hills. I thought that was going to be more expensive, but 8 million, that seems, that seems pretty affordable, right? If, if you and your six closest friends just, uh, just gathered, pulled your money and got a down payment and then rented out the pool house or something, I'm sure you could buy it. It doesn't surprise me because of how many bedrooms there are and you're like one million per bedroom. That's usually how I like to guess. But there are a lot of aspects about this house that I just personally, you know, don't find appealing. In many ways, it's also about what are the comparables in this neighborhood. I was originally thinking 8.1, but I did think that because it didn't have views, that was going to impact the price a little bit more. Isn't the, the, the price of a home all kind of arbitrary? It's like, what, what is it really worth? Brian, you are correct about one thing. The price is arbitrary. And it always comes down to A, what the buyer's willing to pay for it, and B, well, what the seller's willing to take for it. And in this case, it sold for 8.1 million. Is there a winning in it? Should I, should I bet $1? Daniela, I think you let your personal preference sway your pricing. One million dollars a bedroom? That's a good metric. I'm not the person to buy this house. Annalisa, you clearly know your stuff. I do. Your first guess was so close. You're right, the bird streets do fluctuate quite a bit. It is true that a house on the side of the hills with the view may command a greater price. Okay, okay. A view property is extremely hard to determine what the view is actually worth in dollars. Because a view is so emotional, certain people want to see Century City versus others want to see downtown and some the ocean. 